Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to RL After Shock, your quintessential podcast for everything that is EU Rocket League esports. My name is Jay, and joining me for today is Digi Bay. As we round out what is to be the most quiet week I think we've had since we started this podcast, since the first time we did it, it's like, oh my god, this is it's been like it's just dead silence. There was only <laughs> one drama story this week, and like <laughs> I want more drama, damn it. That's what I what want. What are you doing, EU? Come on. <laughs> Exactly. I want to see blood. I want to see tears, <laughs> and I also want to see. Uh, I, I was going to go completely off topic, and like the first <laughs> thing that came in my head was Cooksy and a speedo, and I was like, "No, what? I really don't want to see that." <laughs> like, it was just more meant to be just out of outlandish shit. That's the point of it. That is humor, Jay. I know you don't have that. But it's, you've got to learn no, it. Uh, it's not the humor thing. Is that that's the most random thing I think I've heard all week. It's just like, oh yeah, I want to see Cook Siri in a speedo. <laughs> it's speedo. That's I it. Think, I think I have but to I, rena- I think I might have to rename the title of our podcast. <laughs> that I know. Yeah. See, Danny and Chat is there. <laughs> Cook Siri in a speedo. That is the. <laughs> yeah, can we so restart? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, my mate. I'm, I'm going to quickly reload the Reddit post while we uh, while we fill in the intro. Wikipedia <laughs> rumor: Inside source: Cooks is going to wear speedo at land. There you go. <laughs> what the fuck? We're two minutes in. We've just fucking lost the shit. We've oh. lost the plot entirely. Where oh we're my going, god. We Anyways, <laughs> welcome to RL Aftershock. As I was saying, the quintessential podcast for everything that is EU Rocket League esports. I was I was saying at the top of the show, we. It's been a quiet week. We've only got a couple of news pieces. We only have one tournament we're going to cover. Um, but hopefully mm-hmm. it leads into what will end up being hopefully the, the, the downward trend, of course, with the uh, off-season coming to a close. We're looking forward to the RLCS. We're looking forward to, of course, DreamHack Leipzig, which is coming up later this month. We're going to cover all of that stuff, plus uh, also t- breaking down the Rival Esports uh, $500 All-Platform Cup, which is an interesting little cup as well. Again, we'll get to that in a minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at first, of course, we'll do the news, as we tend to like to do, as we always like to do, because, well, it's the news. We kind of have to do it. Uh, someone actually criticized us the other week, saying that we should always that we should put all the big tournaments first, and it's like... Uh, you, you, you've not, you've not, you don't know how to do. Uh, you, you don't uh, know formats. You put the yeah. big shit at the exactly. end. So it's like it's like it's like, it's like in boxing. Locked in. It's like in boxing, yeah. you know, like when they say, "Oh yeah, let's uh, let's let's put the main event first. It's like no, but then no one would watch the other ones, would they? So you know, that that's the way it works. So I mean, I, I mean, at the end of the day, like I can't really blame the guy, mm. obviously, because like you only get the surface level of things. But like we go through and plan shit, so it makes hundred percent sense. Uh, what was not planned though was our coverage of the RLCS season seven announcement. Yes, they have brought it out, boys. The video is out, obviously. It is sixty seconds long. It announces the million dollar season is returning, and uh, mm. yeah, we're talking about all the good shit in regards to RLCS Season 7. It was a long time coming. Kind of lines up with the dates we covered last week as well, because we were talking about those, um, uh, those that rumour and those rumours coming through of the Smash. I think it's a leak. week, like, it's starting a week later than what that leak was or whatever. Like, I'm saying leak. I reckon it was still just a fake thing, but, I mean, it, it, RLCS runs near enough the same time each year, so it's quite easy to fake something like that, you know? Yeah, it, it it lines up with the timeline that we had initially. Is that mm. is the point? Is the case in point right there? Like you know, we we it, we we were expecting it to be roughly towards the beginning of March, roughly the end of, end of February, and that's exactly where it ended up being. We've got a European qualifiers from March third and March tenth, March thirteenth and March seventeenth. So not quite all on the Sundays, and not quite all on the weekends. We've got some in the midweek. Uh, the play-ins for Europe uh, begin on March thirty-first, so we've got plenty of time, of course, to get our teams warmed up and see where people are going to be moving around. We've got a little bit of a month to go, so there could be some more roster rumors shaken up uh, in between between that particular sort of uh, level. Uh, no yeah. information on South America, which has just been added this season. So we've got no information on where, uh, on, on the newest region, obviously. Uh, I mean, that's not, not really a surprise because like the RL, RLCS qualifiers themselves obviously are announced and they only focus on North America and EU and they don't even touch OCE. Mm-hmm. They haven't even touched OCE once again here. So, uh, you know, that's just basically like the rundown, the footnotes of the story. Obviously, you can find this on it's the- It's because uh, South America is going to have its own route to land or whatever, akin to what, uh, OC have we don't know what the format is and we don't know who's running that but just seeing a uh, rule set confirms it's uh, just in chat from Lucas there uh, 60,000 I have never seen that myself going to um, I'm going to trust it because it's South Lucas America. at the end of the day to like... me as well 60,000 that's surprisingly large for South America like yeah I was no I offense was... to them but I was expecting it to literally be a dog shit amount because it's like being it felt like it was going to be tacked onto it 
you know? Yeah, I, I was going to say this as well. Like, you know, like, it seems like the whole Sam introduction was kind of rushed, and it feels like, you know, they're just implementing it, like, let's just pump some money into this scene uh, and, and raise it, and I think uh, almost mm. artificially raise it. I don't mean to, like, put down the good work that the people over there have done uh, over the course of, uh, of, of uh, over at Rocket Street. Um, but, you know, you take a look at regions like Asia, for example, who have been around for longer and have been, like, a bit more of a presence, and they mm -hmm. don't even get a spot in the RLCS, you know? Actually, uh, yeah. I, I don't know if you spotted this the other... I don't know if you spotted this uh, uh, earlier from yesterday, but they actually, or was it this morning? I can't remember. Uh, but they put out their trailer for the APL, and uh, the trailer's it name, good. it looks good, but the trailer's name itself, like the YouTube video, is just called Alone We Rise. It's like, mate, if that's not like an absolute fuck you to Psyonix, and I yeah. don't know what is, like, holy shit, they, they do not care. Like, they, they know they're up against the up, they're, they're up against all odds. And they, you know, they know honestly, they have to do it together. And honestly, it, do you know what? Like, like here's, here's the thing, right? I actually kind of respect it to a certain extent, because it's like proper, just like, mate. Mm. We alone we rise, and and, and that the, the implication there is that they're going to rise, and it seems like a lot of love has been put into this tournament. You know, we're not like an Asian oh, yeah. podcast, um, but you know, for certainty, you know, I feel like that that's going to be quite an exciting thing. If they don't introduce it by at, at latest the end of the year, then I'm going to be very annoyed with the RLCS. I think. Well, you, you know me, Jay. I've done tons of work over in the Asian scene. I've casted both the first APL and the second APL, and. Uh, no idea. I doubt I'm going to be back for the third APL. Oh, uh, they, they already contacted. announced their talent for it, so... For the qualifiers, that was for uh, oh, was both oh, Rankies okay. and Biza, yeah. Who are two great lads anyway, so not even sad about that. Don't even care. Uh, good on them because they're fantastic and they need more opportunities themselves because OC seems to, especially with ESL dropping off, have lost a lot of their presence in Rocket League. Um, but yeah, with Asia, like... Come on, Sonics, please get them in. A little hint to one of our bits later. I'm hoping that we're going to be seeing an Asian announcement at LAN or something, because there's always some sort of big announcement at LAN about what's coming or around the time. I mean, last uh, LAN, just beforehand, it was the uh, org items are coming confirmation. I'm hoping this time it's going to be Asia down the line, because if it's not mentioned this year, then that that's doing me a big, big sad. Yeah, I'd say so too, you know, and obviously just to talk about, um, uh, you know, just to talk about like, you know, what we've got coming up later mm. on down the line, actually our feature for this week is going to be talking about what we want to see at the next season of RLCS and potentially going forward as well in certain mm. cases if we think they're really unlikely. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be focusing on that one a little bit, of course, coming up in the mid part of the show. Uh, so yeah, of course, for now, we just celebrate the fact that RLCS is a thing now. It's been officiated <laughs> and season seven is on the way, folks. Uh, what is on the way, of course, is also potentially some new rosters again covering the ever-changing landscape of Rocket League in the course of this offseason. We're going to cover this Red Reserve, Fnatic, Flipside, Method, the Vikings clusterfuck that just continues to unfold mm -hmm. and continues to fall out over the course of, of that qualifier that we saw last time around. Um, so... Since, if for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, last uh, week or the week before, we covered uh, a story about uh, how Speed has moved into Flipside, and he's going to be moved in. He moved mm -hmm. over there to cover for the Dreamhack qualifiers. He went forward and actually won WSOE, as we talked about as well. And we were saying to ourselves that this is a complete mess. Uh, some people agree with us, uh, but mm -hmm. it, it, it's gotten even worse since then because, of course, this came out from the Triple Trouble Twitter, and you notice I'm saying Triple Trouble because they are Triple Trouble now. Red Reserve have dropped them, and a quote from the tweet from the Triple Trouble Twitter account: Red Reserve have opted not to renew our contract for 2019. We thank them for accommodating us over the past four months and are happy for the success we shared. Further announcements in the coming days slash weeks. Hashtag Triple Trouble is back with a black heart. Certainly as black as my heart, apparently. <laughs> so, for well, that, anyway, can you remember last season, though, when I said about Red Reserves sniffing around teams and I said they don't seem to be willing to put the money into an RLCS team. They would be willing for an RLRS. You know, wages just for a blanket amount. RLRS, you're looking at about one and a half grand per player a month. Uh, for RLCS, you can be looking anywhere up of four grand. That is a big difference in money. And Red Reserve are a tier two slash three org. You know, their big focus at the moment is COD. Which is fair enough, you know, you've got, if at that level you have one really good team, then the rest are middling, you know? So for me, there was the move for Triple Trouble always going up and everyone was suspecting Fnatic, you know, with the ties there. But this whole story has just got so much juicier, hasn't it, Jay? 
Indeed it has, and it's not just with this whole red reserve dropping the triple trouble thing, obviously. And if you weren't keeping your eyes on the Twitter, of course, there was the roster move. Speed officially departed triple trouble. They quoted on their own Twitter once again. Mm -hmm. As of this morning, Speed has decided to leave Triple Trouble, XX for X Red Reserve roster, wishing the best on his new team and look forward to competing against him in the RCS and other events. We'll be updating on our future here from future from here soon. And then following that, obviously, they announced that they are picking up Cassio permanently in his place, who has now left the Method roster. So, you know, again, quote from their Twitter: Help us in welcoming our newest addition to the roster, Super Baguette and Elite Series MVP Cassio RL. <laughs> uh, Cassio is well known for being an up and coming talent in Europe, and we're excited to get to work and truly prove the potential of this new roster. So, Ronaki Tadpole and Cassio is the new official roster for Triple Trouble going forward. So, I think at this point, it's pretty much a done deal that Speed is going to be joining mm -hmm. Flipside. Like, I don't think there's any dispute about that. Like, obviously, we're looking at this, like, after that performance of WSOE, no goddamn mm -hmm. way, no freaking way they were going to let him go. There were no chance oh, yeah. that they wouldn't buy him out of his contract to otherwise sign him. So, now it just gets easier for Flipside. Or does it? Uh, that's the key question there. Uh, because rumors started circulating of the idea that maybe Fnatic were looking to sign Speed and the flip side side. Uh, this screenshot actually taken here from uh, Kojo's Twitter sees that he very recently signed, uh, he recently followed Mystic and Cooks here. Uh, now with the idea of Speed also being in, 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 that, in that flip side side, the intimation is that he will join them. Mm -hmm. uh, so that the idea of the contract to buy out. And uh, I also drink, draw attention to this little article as well, which pretty much summarizes everyone with everything we just talked about right here. Like Duck Moriarty, it's a fantastic, really, fantastically written oh, article lad. that sort of like gives the footnotes. And I, I love Duck. You know, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not ashamed to call it. You know, we're friends, we're great mates. Uh, ever since back during the recent Someone game in the UK. Fuck you. Um, uh, which back during like the UKCSGO.com days, like back when it was like a tiny website and a tiny Counter Strike scene. You know, we, we, we go way back. And basically, he summarizes all the footnotes here including uh, doing his own little research and reaching out to certain sources uh, in the uh, scene. In particular, he contacted a source uh, close to Triple Trouble. I don't know if Ben has the screenshot right here, but uh, uh, I posted it in, in, our, in our show plan so I can talk about it myself. Quote from the Triple Trouble source, which I can imagine is probably base or someone within that sort of camp relatively uh, close towards it. You know, I could also mm -hmm. imagine it being Ronicky based off of his particular sort of like disappointment that he output on Twitter. But the quote is, uh, the scenario is a big mess. No disagreement there. A roster change from an established RLCS team causing a chain reaction through four teams at their peak in Europe. The X-Red Reserve roster put, barely put a foot wrong since the uh, start of season six. Also no disagreement there. And the mm. idea of a roster change has taken everyone by surprise. Cassio in one tournament with the team has, unbe has had unbelievable results with Tapo and Ronicky, including three zeros against Mouse Sports, Nordavind, and PSG. There's this team with Casio is still an extremely strong, well, is still an extremely strong team without an organization, with the need uh, for a, G a team in Gfinity Elite Series and the desire for a top team. Fnatic appears to be left with the choice of buying out the remaining members of the flip side roster and signing Speed to form their new team, an already uh, an already proven roster from winning WSOE, signing the Triple Trouble roster effectively for free, which is something that I initially thought when they. When they, when they said that they were breaking out and breaking away from Red Reserve, I thought to myself, that's exactly what Fnatic probably should do here. Mm -hmm. uh, or looking elsewhere for a team, most likely getting the likes of uh, Savage, basically. And those, my, those for me were my two options. I was thinking of that, right? Get Triple Trouble. You've got those guys. Speed is not 100% a done deal to flip side just yet. Uh, although he was immediately <laughs> after the announcement. So there you go. Um, or you, you get yourself uh, a hold of Savage. Or you just do, you just splash out a load of money and buy out flip side tactics. So let's, let's, talk, let's talk about this for a little bit. Um, you know, I think the idea that, for, I think, again, the intimation was that, I, I think they were in sort of like discussions prior to the point of mm -hmm. separating from their roster, you know, because Ronicky obviously tweeted out saying that he was just pissed off. He said, if, if this if this ends up being true, I'm going to oh, be... Oh, apparently this was pretty much over. contracts there just about to be signed off and then oh, really? it stopped. Like right there and then, mm. like it was a done deal. Sort well, of like me losing yeah, work this week. Yeah, to completion. They were, discuss yeah, they were discussing uh, pay and all of that and getting near enough like before contract signings. And then Fnatic just taking a step back and evaluating their options because they may have heard a couple of rumors about Flipside, you know? Yeah, you know, I mean, the I mean, I'm not sure what the rumors particularly say about Flipside, mm. but obviously, with this whole thing being propped up, you know, there's certainly some circumstantial evidence to to, to prove to, to suggest the idea that there's a likely chance that uh, um, uh, that 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 you know, 
uh, that uh, for that, that you know flip side are coming to the end of their uh, involvement with Rocket League. You know, mm. for certain, you know, Hex is uh, uh, not Hex. Um, uh, yeah, Hector. it is Hex. Hector. Yeah. Hector yeah. has like you know Sir Frost has certainly been just very vocal about his disappointment with the way that Rocket League esports has been mm -hmm. run. You know, from the in-game item stuff, you know, to not selling merchandise for teams and various other managerial things. You know, he's been vocal on Twitter, on Reddit, on fucking interview with Dazarin. You know, yeah. like it's it's been a boy it's been a pot over boiling for a little bit of time. You know, and I think it's like now reaching the bottom end I think I honestly think Frost is very very tired of this scene and honestly do you know what I don't even blame, I can't him. blame him no, no I don't think we can like it just as well this is actually a really good move to like see out your time in Rocket League if you were to like near enough hand the reins the flip side legendary reins over to a top tier org like Fnatic no one's going to cry about it because it's a good move Fnatic are probably if like you know flip side are wanting out they probably give fanatic a lower sort of like um i want to say sale charge you know like um a lower transfer fee to essentially buy out the players contracts and uh, the team that so it all makes good sense and that's why you'd have fanatic there looking okay they can pick up triple trouble for free essentially they don't have to pay anything or they can just go spend let's just say an extra Fifteen thousand dollars, like just a random base amount, to pick up a team that has already proven that it can beat the best in the world. That is a big way up because Triple Trouble, especially with Casio now, is an unproven factor. All they've had to show really is those uh, DreamHack results, which don't get me wrong, were good results. But Flipside is Flipside. You cannot deny that at all. Having Cooks here on your team as well, you've got to remember Fnatic have to uh, weigh in the fact that they're in Gfinity. So having Cooks here into Gfinity being nuts. Mystic's a hardworking lad and Speed's been part of Gfinity before. So it pretty much rounds up quite perfectly for them. Same can be said for Triple Trouble, don't get me wrong. But the whole sort of package that the Flipside team can give makes perfect sense for Fnatic to weigh up the option between the two. Yeah, you know, and especially like, you know, you consider the options are still on the table for them. They could still go for this flip side buyout. They could go for the triple trouble roster. I mean, yeah. Ronicky says it's probably not going to be the point. Um, although Roken has uh, other intimations. Um, again, to quote this the... Uh, <laughs> I don't blame you, mate. I really don't. This is... Uh, right, so for those of you who don't know who Roken is, he used to be a caster, relatively prominent in the scene back with the Chief Infinity Weeklies. He came back mm -hmm. from a little bit of rival, then he went away to be the manager of Savage right now. And Duck did reach out for a, 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 a comment from him, uh, to which Roken responded with three words. <laughs> Three fucking words. Just do it. Those were his three words. No further context, by the way. That is an entire You quote. don't need that fucking context, though. It's just... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mm. Oh my god! I like I just, it, 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 the, the thing about it is like for obviously I'm casting with Roken before. Like it's such a Roken thing to do that it does not even shock me that this is. <laughs> but it's also at the same time the most ridiculous thing I've ever read yeah. in a Rocket League article ever. Like just ever. <laughs> it's so. It is something else, man. Like it, it, that, it that is. That was hilarious. it. I was reading through it and it was like, oh yeah, this is actually really nicely. Uh, like written up everything is great all the uh sort of like uh quotes are good and then it just ruined right at the end and it was just like oh nah that is like literally I think, I think, just i think the worst part about this is that as well duck updated the article twice one to correct a mistake he made in regards to the wsoe results on the second mm -hmm. was to add the, <laughs> the second just, you that. didn't need to do that duck <laughs> Uh, I mean, we all know what this was in reference to, and it's not really any sort of proper statement on this, apart from people saying, oh, Fnatic should be looking at Savage. Uh, well, with Savage's we recent week, performances, you know? yeah, I, I was saying they, they could be looking at them, but I remember I was there like, don't, because one, Bluey would be the, probably the best choice to that. Alpha as well is all right, but Devo not really wanting to be there because he's a lazy little shit. And <laughs> wow, the whole just straight or, up like, calling him out on the podcast. Wow. Oh, he's a good player. I'm not going to disagree with that, but he's a lazy shit. That's you get that. I'm. I can say the same thing. I procrastinate like fuck. I'm sure you do as well, Jay. Everyone's like that. Oh, Everyone has at least I have legitimate reasons this week. So, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, not to get enough. into those reasons on this show. You know, I've <laughs> moaned about my career enough over the past, like, 19 episodes. So mm. let's not do that. But, uh, 
you know, like, but, but, but what do we see as the most likely scenario out of this story? Like, are we going to be seeing Flipside go over to Fnatic? Like, I certainly think that'll be the best pickup for Fnatic, but obviously you've got to jump through mm -hmm. the legal loopholes and buying out the contracts for Mystic and Cooks here. Um, that's the most, that's the biggest challenge right there. Or they could just go ahead and buy the Triple Trouble side, so, which are now completely unproven for the thanks that Speed is going over to Flipside. Cassio's coming in. He's not exactly a one to one match. Um, or, or, or do you go with Savage, which personally, I think that would be the worst outcome just to start the day. Just, just, oh. just to think, or just to rate them in, time, in terms of which outcome I think will come out best, I think it would be the flip side roster, the triple trouble roster, and then the savage roster. Oh, the savage roster is already dealed on a whole different. Uh, way. That that's a no. Um, looking at this, there are two options: who I want will uh, get picked up, and who I think will get picked up. So I want triple trouble to get picked up. Because yes. I'm pretty sure they're going to uh, stay within RLCS next season. They're good enough, uh, especially with Cashier now. Like you were saying, it's not a light for light pickup, but they work so well together anyway. And it don't matter. They're at a caliber where they're going to be able to probably take down Mouse. And at the moment, I could even see Vitality drop out of RLCS. Possible. Which is a bit Entirely yikes. possible, yeah. Um, we'll see. We've still got like two months away. Uh, but yeah, so I want to. Traffic, but realistically, looking at this, my my brain just says go with Flipside. It makes so much more business sense to be able to bring on that caliber. And Fnatic are always an org which wants to be the best. That's why they picked up Leftovers originally. And then when Leftovers, like, yeah, when Leftovers started to fall down, it was just that case of, oh, well, a couple of lads look good, you know, as poster boys and that. When they went straight down into RLRS, it was like, no, fuck that shit out. We need a winning team. And Flipside, for me, has the potential to be a winning team now. We've already seen them win WSOE. What's to stop them to go on and do DreamHack, you know? Yeah, you know, they certainly got over their teething period fucking quick, you know. Like we we, we mm -hmm. saw them we saw them play in the Dreamhack qualifiers after WSOE after they blew everybody out in WSOE and we we're looking at just like oh well this is gonna be a this is gonna be a mess and a half, isn't it? And then obviously they Are went they to actually WSOE. Had Dreamhack? I can't remember. I um, saw the sign ups. I'm not too sure. Uh, let me have a double check on that one. I haven't seen them sign up yet. Obviously they didn't qualify for Dreamhack. Um but right now, sign -up like, right, sheet now is out. right now quickly if go. you're watching if you're watching this live, you can go to Liquipedia and like refresh that page every now and again and sometimes have updates like they just added tainted minds and evil geniuses uh onto that sign up sheet uh, i don't know the i don't know the 100 source for that i'm just going to trust because it's liquipedia and they've got some good guys running it um so you know but I, I haven't got 100 i would imagine with six spots left that they probably would get a spot flip sign like you know, especially mm -hmm. after wsoe like, there's no fucking way you can't include those you can there's no way you can't include them in, in part of the open sign up like yeah we've already got the invites from you know nrg and cloud nine and all those guys but no no way you can't include flip sign Oh, yeah, definitely. And I'm just looking at because that's going to be once we we're talking about this uh, uh, a couple of weeks back where these were I would like reserved open sign up spots where it's like, you know, get on the phone some early, say, right, we're coming along, but we want to announce it alongside like, for example, with Flipside, oh, we're officially signing speed, but we can't say that publicly yet. Can you please reserve a spot? We will be there, all of that. And when you've gone, all oh, cool, and you're up, DreamHacker there going, yeah, sure, why the fuck not? You're not going to get that same love from, I'm just looking through, like the likes of Esketit, uh, Seed, Nex, and Matar, who are good players, don't get me wrong, but they're not going to get that same love because they're not an org. They don't bring anything to DreamHack, like the uh, sponsorships and all the viewership that, say, your flip side does. So, yeah, we've still got a couple of spots open. I would expect to see Flipside there, or finally this Fnatic deal goes through and they try and get rush them out there as the first performance because they're on a hot streak at the moment. Who knows? Yeah, for certain. I'm hoping to see some more, uh, some mm. more good shit out of them. Um, I, I actually just linked off to the. Uh, sorry, if you look in the Twitch chat, Lucas actually linked off to the Smash page, which I think is a oh, little that's bit where more. I was reading yeah, off. yeah. It looks like it's a bit more updated. I can't tell if. I'm just trying to see, like, I'm just trying to see if I can, like, So do Splice is a weird one for me, actually, here. Just bringing on this note. If you ever noticed, back at last Insomnia, Splice were there. Not to play, but as a, like, um, a marketing thing where you could play alongside one of their pro players. It was Karma and Dubu Nose that was there. I, I'm i always baffled about the amount of support that Splice are putting into the Rocket League community because they've now just reached RLCS. So that's good. But it was just like, it, it, 
it seemed a little bit odd to me, you know, when you've got this American team doing all that sort of stuff and really helping out, yet it went very unnoticed. I think it's probably because Splice weren't quite up to par at the time. And I think it's also just down to the, just where Rocket League was at that particular period as well. You know, mm. like obviously now we're getting in-game items or now we hope to get in-game items. Whether that will actually can't end up happening is another question entirely, um, you know, based off of various rumors. Um, but, you know... Uh, which, well, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not. I mean, I, it kind of surprised me that they actually went so far as to head over to Europe. To be honest, that, that, that's my, that's my biggest. Surprise. No, look, this is what I'm saying. Like, I'm surprised they put so much support in, but I wasn't surprised that they were signed up. It's more that case of, I don't understand why Splice are putting so much support into the team, but they are, and so I'm expecting to see them there. And yeah, they are there. Um, one happy surprise as well is actually we get Wind and Rain at Dreamhack. They've uh, picked up Vel, Ice Tz, and Jazer. That's and Pulse as well. That's a fun little roster. That could quite easily get a lot of community support, which I love for Wind and Rain. Like ever since yeah. seeing them in CS, I was just there, like, this is a good org. I like. Them. <laughs> when you saw them in CS, oh god, yeah. <laughs> she got like the worst team that you could have. You yeah. could have gone for anything that did internationally were, successful. Uh, Dota for fucking nah. that, you know League of Legends for fucking CS. Oh mate. Oh, you know God. that I don't watch either Dota or League of Legends. I don't give a shit about that. But yeah, <laughs> Winter Rent has been fun. They've been trying to figure out a good Rocket League team for a while. Like they, they don't want to pick up like an RL RS standard, but they want a good community team. This is a fantastic pick up for them because those three lads are great. Yeah, and obviously we're seeing some of the other teams like Secret are going to be playing there, Complexity are going to be playing there, Bread are sending their squad out, MCon are there, One Up are there, Nordavind are there. You know, there's actually even already... Rogue are going to be there. Like... Yeah, even yeah, even Rogue are going to be there. We still got six spots left uh, to uh, to to be confirmed. Uh, so you know, we, we've got a few different. Uh, you know, obviously we're going to have you know a few mm. different uh, a few more. Uh, Sign-ups to come through. So of course, make sure you keep yourself locked on the page uh, as standard with the DreamHack qualifiers uh, or the DreamHack open sign-up, I should say, because uh, I should expect some other squads, like the likes of Flipside, the likes of maybe Fnatic, um, Savage. I'm not too sure about. I don't think Trouble Trouble will go, um, but you know, like you know, some some of those other squads yeah. to see how they'll be able to turn up. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I think yeah, I think that's about all we can maybe cover with that method, particular story. But I don't know. Maybe I I'm mean, pretty sure we be method. Maybe Method. I don't know. I'm not sure how they feel about their uh, the newest pickup, to be honest. Um, mm. Especially after they bombed out of the last qualifier, so... They might not be so confident don't want to bomb out this with... Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Now, Gfinity Elite Series will be there home for the moment, so there you go. Um, but enough about rosters and stuff. Obviously, there'll be more roster moves coming forward, so make sure you keep it locked to all the standard channels for RL Aftershock. Follow the Twitch at twitch.tv slash RL Aftershock and the Twitter at RL Aftershock. We'll be bringing you, of course, all the random standard retweets and news as it comes. So moving on from news, let's talk about the RLCS a little bit more because one of the things I didn't want to talk about this week before we uh, went on to our tournament roundup was uh, about what we want to see out of the new season. Obviously, it's a new season. It's a new dawn, uh, brand new sort of like a, a sunset over the over the horizon of the uh, of the Rocket League esports scene. With RLCS, obviously, we'll be seeing where the best of the best compete. So I kind of wanted to talk about what we want to see out of the uh, out of the next season itself. Uh, not in terms of results or anything like that. Like, you mm -hmm. know, and it's part of our job to stay relatively impartial unless we think you're being an idiot. Um, complexity. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but, well, you know, we want to talk about... now, Complexity have now done the 1A and they've made, like, the smartest move ever with picking up Flakes and no one thought of it. Like, that is an outplay, you know? We'll have to see how that goes in the long term. Obviously, they're here attending the DreamHack land, so I want to say, oh, those are going to be my, my, my two-watch team. Like, you know, those are going to be my guys that's like, these are, the, I want to mm -hmm. watch every single one of these matches. But again, we'll talk about that when we come to our DreamHack preview show, hopefully in the next week or so. Uh, but we're going to be talking about, of course, the uh, uh, RLCS Season 7 stuff. What do we want to see out of this land? Uh, so we got some points together about stuff, the stuff that we want to see. We're going to go from most likely things to happen to least likely things to happen um, based on the... Uh, oh, based then we on need to rearrange this one down here. <laughs> uh, are you going to be moving? Are you going to be I'm moving? I'm just going to quickly move that to... Uh... Up here and uh... oh no 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 because at the top at the top of the points is where we'll be uh, um, is where we'll be moving um, is where we'll be seeing the most like the most likely stuff. Yeah yeah yeah. Are yeah. you doing some reorganising of our show plan so we can? Yeah, that's it. I've 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 done the reorganise. Done the reorganise. We're good. 
Okay, We're all good. right then, fair enough, fair enough. All right then. Well, let's talk about our first point, which is about South America, obviously. Um, uh, new new <laughs> announcement, new new region in the RLCS. Uh, and we want to see them go, we want to see them with some success. We want to see them with some success. Yeah, we want to see them with some success, when I say it right. Um, you know, Baker made the point of just not having like some shit mixed team. Like we had a WSOE because of visa issues. Mm-hmm. I certainly think that WSOE dropped the ball on that one because they didn't prepare enough in time. Um, but I'm hoping that obviously that with the RLCS being it, um, um, uh, with the RLCS being the way that it is, um, it will be. Uh, it will hopefully look a little bit. Uh, it will hopefully look a little bit more legit in the sense that we have. Um, what's it? We have fucking Ben showing off our plans. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's the word I'm trying to bring out here? I'm, I can't figure it out. Um, I'm hoping that again, as you say, I'm hoping that they won't just ragtag some squads. You know, I'm hoping they get some actual teams. Together so yeah, the problem for, like, with WSOE was it was pick up team two from Lotus and one from. Was it something like noisy or something? And it was purely because they couldn't get the whole of Lotus out there because visas didn't work. You'd be hoping this time around that they'd be able to sort out the visas. My only problem with that, why it might not be as easily done, is purely because looking at the uh, schedule that they're running, like um, RLCS is running about half a month, like starting half a month later which means it will cut into that breaking time, you know, where there's normally about three slash four weeks between the end of league play and the start of LAN. So I don't know how they're going to quickly get it because you got to think, as easy as it is, like as hard as it is to get an EU visa can be the said, uh, same, said the same for South American ones, sometimes even harder. So we'll just have to see how they handle that, but hopefully it should all uh, run quite smoothly. My big point is more, I want to see Rocket Street get the help and funding they need from Sionix and let Rocket Street run away with their own league. Same with uh, what Frodam do over in OCE, because I think that'd be the best way to help develop that scene. Yeah, I, I'd love to see that as well, obviously. You know, again, mm. I, I want to see the, in the endemics develop the scene in the way that they know how to do so. I mean, I'm hoping that they obviously, you know, take locks of good care with it. I hope the Sionics mm-hmm. handle it great on their end of things so that way when they bring them to the World Championships, it is looking relatively good. It is looking like, okay, there will be a, a, you know, there will be a legitimate team, a top team in the South American region that, that will do good work with it. So I'm hoping that that is just, I'm just hoping that that's just how it turns out overall because South America has like a really, really good, um, uh, uh, so I just know short edits of the thing. Um, you know, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that obviously they do some good. Um, uh, I'm hoping they do some good work with that to like, you know, really boost mm-hmm. South America because it's, it's it's great having one more scene added on board. But you know, I'm I'm not sure about you know using. I'm not sure about whether, like, my confidence is not always installed in Sonics to do the right thing. And that's my key thing about South America, because we've already seen one massive fuck up. It's a massively impassionate esports scene. Mm-hmm. I don't want to see a second one. You know. Yeah. So. I remember with WSOE, Sionics were, were a little less hands-on with it, so hopefully they'll get their stuff sorted out. The reason why it's taken so long for them to get involved seems to be more that they want people that know the scene and can handle getting them across. Um, it's the same reason why Asia should uh, will probably be the next stepping stone later down the line, because they're trying to be very cautious and safe, because that's how Sionics always are. But I I think there will be one fuck up. There always is, Jay. I'm I don't want there to be a fuck up, but I think there will be, and that's I don't know what that will be. I have a feeling, if anything, it's going to be, you know, putting on a a LAN in America and obviously having the same issues with visas uh, that we have with WSOE, because obviously that was the that was the Mm -hmm. thing right there. That was where things really, really messed up. Um, I reckon that will be it. One player can't get a visa. So technically the team that came through and they will still turn up. There'll still be two teams from South America. One of them technically won't be the team. They'll sh- uh, show up and bum it out because they've got a player who isn't part of them, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I want to see it more legitimized for South America, you know, because otherwise that doesn't give a whole lot of hope for other regions moving forward. Circa Asia, mm. CIS, Africa. Um, mm. I don't think we're ever CCIS and Rocket League purely because the Russian CIS region relies entirely upon gambling. It doesn't and actually. We know. <laughs> it not, all, not all the time. Not all the time, you know. Like not all the time. Just sometimes it relies on skin nine. trading. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that's okay. Oh yeah, no skin trading is fine because Sonic allows that. You know, in-game skin trading. 
Yeah, it's fine. Well, I'll, I'll, <laughs> do you know what? Like, we'll, we'll have to see how that whole thing unfolds. You know, like again, I, I, I've heard things about certain power plays moving around from a certain organization who want to move into doing CIS Asia tournaments. Um, in, oh, yeah. I've, I've talked to Bacon about this in the past as well. I've talked about you know how how I'm not going to go into specifics on this podcast because it's all like strictly confidential. But I can say that there is some movements going about to hopefully bring you know some good Rocket League into into the fold. So. It's well, pretty much just the gambling aspect holding it back, so... Yeah, uh, with the way just... the Cyanix hold that, which, again, is completely batshit because, you know, they hold a land in Vegas, for fuck's sake. Mm. Like, you know... WSC <laughs> like, is really run out of a poker studio. Yeah, you w- allow WSC to be run out of a poker studio, host the season last season six land in in, in Vegas, host and season was it three, season three land in MGM Grand. Like, you know, mm-hmm. come the fuck on, guys. Like come the fuck four? on. <laughs> season was it season four? It's season four, yeah, in DC, weren't it? Yeah, sorry, season four. My mistake. Sorry, I'm, yeah. I'm, my memory doesn't always serve me correctly. Specific details is what I always mess up. That's why he gets me here. Yeah, that's yeah, because Bacon knows what he's <laughs> talking about. I'm just here to chat shit. Uh, right, so let's talk about our second point, which is about talent. Um, we've mm-hmm. got another bit coming later on down the line, but again, in order of likelihood, uh, I want our 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 talent and Shogun to be used again. I think Shogun is probably a little bit further down because he's still got those uh, visa problems. That, as that's far as it. I know. This is why a second because ROR's talent for me is a given. They will be back. The Shogun is whether he can get a visa for it. And that's why it's like knocked down to seconds because that weight is just like he's Shogun alone is probably like third or fourth on the list. But the RL RS talent, if they don't bring them back, Sonics are doing like uh, they're shooting themselves in the foot because hands up. I think the RL RS casters at LAN were the best casters at LAN last time round. So. Um, I will. I will say back. that personally, I, I prefer like the EU guys more than more than the RL. I mean, that's just again, <laughs> it's my personal preference. Honestly, I still I still agree with you. Like you know, that I think the RLRS casters are bringing something brand new to the table, and it really, really looks good, and it sounds good at what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like you know, I, I can't, I can't, I can't criticize those guys at all. You know, like the likes of uh, Achieves, for example, is just a fantastic analyst. Jorby is a great play by play. But if you ask me where I rate the other guys, I still rate the EU uh, commentator scene. Um, above the NA. and I'm not. I'm not just not saying that. I'm, I'm not just saying that because I'm an I'm an EU commentator. Like I legitimately just prefer Gfinity broadcasts above RLRS broadcasts. That's just the way that I I prefer things. You know, that's just my that's just my it, opinion. It's a you know? different view. Like it's different. Yeah, opinions because we like that style because that's from our region. That's how we consume our media. Is that same? It's like when we say about stacks. Great caster. I fucking hate listening to him cast because I just don't like his casting personally. I respect it. It's fucking good, but it's not what I like myself. And so that's, there's nothing wrong with that because he's very much Americanized to that uh, style with, you know, like very ice hockey or American football based or whatever. Um, whereas we like the more banterish joking about two best mates sort of like talking to each other that say G Finty offers, ain't it? Is that more sort of, it's very personal. With our yeah. style. Yeah, it's much more personal. And I, I, I particularly like how we've sort of like, you know, bl- blurred the lines between what we've done. Obviously, you know, that's just more political discussions for another day. You know, like I can talk, I, I, could, I could spend a whole podcast talking about casting styles because that's just something I absolutely mm-hmm. love to do. So, you know, like we, we'll, we'll get down more to that later on down the line. But uh, our third point is in game items. Finally, oh, now the reason why this isn't at the top because I know Sonics have already confirmed it, but based off the fallout we heard from the likes of Frost in the past, um, after the fact of when the announcement came down, and obviously like all the spe- speculation we've had since mm-hmm. then, and talking about what we think about things and how we weigh things up, like I still think there's a good chance that in-game items will not be delivered to the extent that we hyped it up to be when the announcement came out. Like you know, I remember during the oh, yeah. th- during the week when it was announced, we went on a podcast and we had this like wave of just relief hit us. Like finally, after months. So years of moaning, they have uh, appeased the, the audiences. Uh, but then I've just taken a step back and listening to other people and just don't, taking a moment just like, to think about it rationally. Like, you know, there's still a good chance they could mess this up based off of Sarnix's own interpretation and opinion about things. So from my takeaway on it all was very much, this was linked into the TSM signum, where essentially Sonics hadn't planned anything out with esports org items. TSM were looking at it and go, yep, yeah, but we want to make revenue from this game at the same time. So Sonics caught wind of that, you know, probably by one of the players telling them this information, to which Sonics suddenly went, oh shit, we actually need to do esports items now if, if these orgs want to come in. So they put the announcement out, of course, and, you know, they haven't started any work. 
That's why they've given a, oh, it'll come in 2019 sort of era. I honestly can't see them taking so long that it'll be into, you know, next before the next RLCS season. I think they'll do it for, I'm hoping they'll do it anyway for season seven LAN. And they'll just start off with the basic few teams, you know, which you can uh, get. So the four EU, the four NA and the uh, two OCE teams. South America will probably get dicked out, but they don't actually have orgs. So you can't, it's quite hard to do org items for teams without an org. Um, so that's how they'll probably do it there. And then it'll get expanded a second time, you know, the three months later when season eight starts and you'll get the full wave of all the RLCS teams. That's how I see it anyway. If not, they're, you know, just missing the point of it. Well, just to go back to their original press release back when uh, back when Josh put out the uh, the the the, uh, the news uh, mm -hmm. way way back in like November uh, when he when yep. the original announcement came down, like one of the one of the uh, paragraphs that stood out to me was like the second one in where he talks about the implementation of esports items. And just to quote that 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 particular paragraph real quick, he says, "One of the most common sentiments we've seen when the community speaks of esports items is the perceived simplicity of slapping a logo on the car to sell it." Many have suggested the idea of just throwing oh, a few yes. skins into a DLC pack and calling it a day, but the realities of development and partnerships is that there are significantly more to consider, especially when developing content system, complex system for downloadable content associated with esports organizations. Now, at first, I'd brushed over this just because I was so happy about esports items, but now that I'm taking a kick back, I'm looking at this thing and myself like, well, actually, it, it actually is a lot more simple than you're making it out, because <laughs> otherwise, uh, virtually every other esports is literally, no, legit, slapping like, a few DLC skins together the problem is always the legality signing the contracts for how do we pay you when do we pay you um how much your brand and we allowed to use getting both teams on board that's the hard part it's not the okay we need to find out some new rocket pass way of doing it no it's literally just give us on steam on ps4 on the xbox on even nintendo switch give us the flip side pack give us the fanatic pack give us the triple trouble like skin pack and that's all we want just i don't know two dollars for a dlc a top uh not even a top but probably just an antenna with a flag in that's all we want well, that's and the thing, though, right? That, that's the thing. Like, when, it, when it comes to actually developing the items themselves, like, the, 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 it, it, it is really that simple, you know? Like, again, mm -hmm. and, and with partnerships, for the most part, esports organizations just want some revenue share. Like, you know, it doesn't have to be, like, some sort of, like, 50-50 split like Psyonix do. Even if you took, like, a... If, even if you went a low enough to, like, to just, like, a 60-40, for example, like, that would probably be enough, I'd, I, I, I'd say, for most esports organizations. Maybe I'm mm -hmm. wrong. Maybe, I, maybe the mentality is... is, is most issue, of but, the time, it's 50-50, and that's yeah. because it's after say steam or sony have taken their cut which is normally yeah like with steam it's a 30 percent cut just straight off the top so you're left with that 70 percent of the price so 70 percent of two dollars is i don't bloody know straight off the top of my head that's going to be one dollar forty so then it'd be 70 uh cents going to cyanic 70 cents going to let's say tsm for every purchase and that's just generally how it works yeah, I mean, you know, it certainly seems like it's overblown the complexity of the issue because if it really was that complex, it's how not is making it... excuses. Yeah, how, it's not how, how, how is it that CSGO have managed to do it with no problems for the past 40, like five, six years or so? And they bring out a new player skin or every few out, weeks. Yeah, they, they bring out brand new stuff for every major, for every major land. How is it that Rainbow Six are able to do the same thing for every six invitational or pro league? How is it that the likes of Dota 2 can do that with, you know, and, and even implement sponsors and shit into, like, you know, into the map? Uh, of the game. Same thing with League of Legends as well. They do it for Summoner's Rift. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a, like a lot of these esports titles have already got it down pat. It's that same argument I said, you know, Sionics have the luxury of having all these esports to pull from and all these lessons to learn uh, versus, you know, having absolutely none of the leeway to say, well, you've, yep. we, we, we've made this mistake, you know, because you, you've, you've got it all right there. You know, you've got the it all right there. The only time it's different is when you do an Overwatch and you create your own bloody league to which... It seems like that's never going to happen when we're in Rocket League, face it. So there is no actual excuse. Like, the only reason I can see them literally not doing esports items is because for season nine, we're suddenly going to franchises. And it's just like, no, that's not ever happening. So <laughs> what are you holding on for? You know?
Yeah, I'm hoping that we don't get franchises, obviously. Like, you know, obviously we've seen some pushback oh, from, the, from complexity owners and shit. You know, dumb. but yeah, that, that's, that's another conversation for another day. So we'll talk about that if and when the prospect ever becomes plausible. But let's move on uh, because I wanted to put this in as uh, as one of the least likely things to happen because obviously for season seven, we've already got the announcement that the qualifiers are going to be the exact same thing mm -hmm. as from the last six seasons. And I think that honestly, it's a terrible idea because... Like, you know, it all, it all essentially rests your mm -hmm. entire season potentially rests on a single day, and that is the play-in day. I think that for something as important as the World Championship of Rocket League, you should at least separate that over the course of two days in a double elimination bracket. That way you don't get shut out and eliminated mm -hmm. immediately. You have a bit more of a chance to get back into it. Because, you know, it's, and it's, 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 a, it's, it's, it's a commentary on the, the, the format of RLCS and RLRS as a whole, because Secret had their problems last time around, obviously, when they had their, um, uh, when they had their shit run, like, they had their great one, mm -hmm. sorry, just go to shit uh, over the course of two weeks. Not even that. I think it was like a, a week because it was like off stream matches that got. You know them. what the funny thing actually, and just going into your point at seven, the biggest problem why the qualifier format won't change for me is because of the broadcast, where they can't do like naturally. The best way to change qualifier would be to have both EU and NA, of course, separated by their time starting on Saturday for the top 128 and then that's closed down to the top 32 um, akin to what DreamHack did with their qualifiers, you know, for the second day. And that'd be absolutely fine. You'd be able to run that out. But the problem is where they're working with a team of, you know, one host, maybe two if they want to get Gillyweed in for that as well and say four, maybe five casters, it's all too much for a team of that size to handle, isn't it? If they, you know, would open it up to getting more people in, even if it was all run out of the NA studio and they just got, you know, the RLRS talent that had a massive casting crew for the two days, it would be doable. But I don't think it's going to change because they've got this style. It works, yes, but it's not the best style. Um, and that's the problem. Yeah, you know, like at this point, it is just trying to push things a little bit further on because, like, if you're, if again, if, if your entire run rests in a single day and you fail because someone didn't get the right amount of sleep, someone didn't have correct breakfast, things didn't have, you know, things didn't work out in your favor, like, you know, th that's that's a pretty shitty way to have your entire tournament run prematurely cut. Like, imagine if that happened to, mm. I don't know, like, maybe, imagine if that happened. Imagine if we had like a three-man sticking rule, like we have a Renegade Cup, and Flips had to requalify, and that's what happened during the play-in bracket. There would be blue bloody murder called out by every single person in the Rocket League. Oh, I can't space. wait for the next Renegade Cup and it would just be so good because so many things have been learned from the yeah. first Renegade Cup. So the next one when that rolls around because it's looking like science do want to do that again, of course. It would just be so good. Like, I can't wait for that because that's actually a project I'm hyped to do again. Yeah, I'm really excited to see what comes out of the Renegade Cup. Hopefully we get actually to do the actual finals this time. Uh, but uh, more... More about that later on down the line when the next Renegade Cup gets announced. For now, though, let's move on to point six, which is Asia. I put this as very unlikely because, yes, it's very, very unlikely. Um, like, mm -hmm. fuck, man. Like, Asia just gets another blow to the back of the head. Just like, douche, douche, douche. Like, they're geez, just, like first APL they're the was middle denied. child. They're, they're just forgotten, basically. That's yeah. the problem. Like, f first was APL getting denied any official support for um, for APL. Uh, we have one and E getting official, uh, officially d d d denied official support, which mm -hmm. do you know what? Uh, fair enough in Sonic's case, because one and E was running two teams that were competing in the APL at the time, and it's like, well, that's just massive conflict of interest. That's massive corruption. Yeah. So, you know, I, I wouldn't do that. I, I certainly wouldn't, wouldn't agree to I, that, that notion at all. In regards to that, I sort of, tr I want to say I trust one NE because I know the lads and they're good guys. But it's oh, yeah. that sort of they can see the potential and the make money, which of course you've got to. Uh, what is it? Tasty Tears put well too much money into it, probably for anyone's like understanding. So he's just being there, like, oh, if it finally comes and he has those teams on one NE under contract and he can sell them off and make some money that way, get it back, and it's all good. But yeah, you can see Sionix being very hesitant because it is a conflict of interest. So that regard is understandable. And that's why I think the whole APL structure change should be able to help them there. And that's why I'm hoping anyway that we get a Asia's going to be in the ne in season eight at season seven land finals. I'm hoping that's the announcement we get.
Yeah, I'm hoping so too. But like, you know, even one and E is still involved in the current running of the APL stuff. We've obviously got Rocket League India also stepping up as well. Um, I'm hoping that that is sort of like, you know, re redeemed a little bit with the whole bringing in the Chinese market because China is, mm -hmm. is like, you know, is like integral to success in everywhere. Like, you know, it doesn't matter what industry you're from. You know, like you see a lot of the time uh, movies these days are casting Chinese actresses and actors because they're basically big in the Chinese space. Therefore, they're going to sell the mm -hmm. movie in China. So that basically just doubles your net worth of the movie by default like not, don't even have to make a good movie like I think oh I yeah like, I still always say use the example of fucking in Transformers 4 Mark Wahlberg goes up to like an ATM and it's like the bank of uh, construction bank of China or something like that and you're like what the fuck is that doing in Texas like it makes no <laughs> sense at all but it's because Transformers fucking sells in China they like the robots yeah yeah, exactly. You know, like it, it, I love it, it. man. And I and I think that we would be really remiss to have Asia go out for another for, for another season past season eight. Mm. Like, if we get to season eight and there's no Asia, like, fuck, what do we do from there? Like, like there's no. There is <laughs> I think no we do horror. nothing because you can do nothing, and it's just like Asia. Sorry, lads, but. I think we're putting you up for adoption. Like, you, 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 <laughs> no one wants you here. That's the problem. You are the long lost black sheep of the uh, <laughs> of the Rocket League scene. Like, oh, Christ. I'm sorry, uh, guys, but I think you need to go back to League of Legends. That is the problem. <laughs> Rocket League ain't for you. Jeez. Right, you know, Asia's doing well in PUBG, right? So, you know, maybe you want to go League of Legends and PUBG at the same time. So, you know, don't, don't I mean, yeah, don't, don't, hack don't... it half the goddamn time. So, <laughs> I don't think we should talk about Asia or PUBG, buddy. Um... <laughs> of course you would. I mean, come on. When we just, they just had this thing called Radar, which was like, you could see the items and stuff of other teams. And then suddenly I looked at the number of, not it, it happened over in EU and NA, don't get me wrong, but near enough, half the Asian teams suddenly died because they got banned for using their news. They're like, oh, guys, why has Asia got such a bad stigma of cheating? Like, Rocket League could finally be the first time when no one can cheat in Rocket League. Like, it and we isn't got no Asian presence. And, and then, the then maybe, that's why, maybe that's why they don't want to bring Asia in, because they know for a fact that when it comes, <laughs> when they, when they bring the Asia, will suddenly appear. All, all of a sudden, <laughs> we're just going to get loads of Rocket League cheats. Like, how could you even, how could you theoretically cheat in a game like Rocket League? I don't that's know. the thing, like, I don't, I, I, maybe you've got, like, predictive pathways in a ball, perhaps, maybe. I don't know. I guess that that would be literally the only thing I could think of being a legit cheat would be like uh, a line coming out of the ball to show its trajectory. That would be it. So you actually know where it's going to land, that sort of thing. But I couldn't think of any actual bots being able... Like, we've seen the bots coming up now and, like, you know, being developed. But how would you get that on, like... You must be able to notice when there's a fucking bot on the thing because they move so fucking weird. If you've ever watched the uh, videos on YouTube and that, of people uh, making I've bots never, for fun, I've, ne I've never, I've never seen it to be honest. So I, I can I'll tell have to you. show you. Yeah, I, yeah. Send me a link after we're done here, but you know, we still got a little bit of a show to go because obviously we've got one more point to talk about. That's the EU studio. We talked about this possibly mm -hmm. uh, sorting out the qualifier formats things, but in general, I think EU talent is massively underutilized. Certainly, that talent announcement for DreamHack disappointed me because we haven't got your Stumpies and your Coles and your uh, your subpars and those guys there because I think that they will mm -hmm. fit in perfectly. I was expecting Stumpy and Cole purely because of who they are, like. I'd say they're not necessarily the best ability cast of the region. They're good, but they are the most notorious casters. So it's not about how good you are. It's about like how the presence you bring. It's a different aspect, if that makes sense. So they have so much value to them being at DreamHack. And I would love to actually see them being there with like, you know, some very comedy sketch parts, which would just give DreamHack so much fun to it. And I feel it's a missive, massive, sorry, uh, missed opportunity there for DreamHack. It's a missed you know? opportunity, certainly. You know, like, again, mm. I, f I feel like a part of it, like, we, we were talking about this on our own little, we have, we have our little private Discord where we talk with our own, like, casters and stuff. We do a sort of practice sessions and stuff. <laughs> and we're talking about it's like, you know, like, is, is this just a thing of, like, Sonics doesn't want us to do it? Or is this DreamHack not wanting to do it? Because, you know, we know for Leipzig last year, Sonics had a massive hand in picking out the talent for it. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it feels like that certainly they don't want to trial off the guys of GFINITY. Like, they did it with Greg and back, way back when. Um, uh, but that's that's been about it, you know? Like, you know, what about the, what about the bubble scene guys you know certainly like you know i know that they've acknowledged us you know they all like you know yeah. a, 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 as you were telling me but when we did the uh, the play when we organized the english stream for the play like you know i, I me and i really came as high recommendations from psionics mm. so they know we exist and they know that we're good 
Why they not? just. It, I think it's because they see that you don't, you haven't been trialed properly, which well, is thing, BS though, in that regard. I, 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 just just want to I, I just want to interject and say that I have, right? I, I, I don't. I'm, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. That's why I hate using myself as an example because <laughs> I sound like an egotistical prick. Mm. But if you want to use me as an example, like and it's going to apply to the guys like Damascus, for example, because we both do different games and we both go mm -hmm. to different lands. Like, but Damascus does the FGC scene. I do the CS:GO scene. I have done a shit ton of tournaments. Google my name or not. Like, Wikipedia <laughs> and search my name on the Counter Strike wiki, and you will find a shit ton of references. A few of those are lands. I did the FCDB Cup <laughs> back in 2017. I did recently did the South uh, Southeast Europe Championship for ESL on the Bucharest Gaming Week Invitational, which is also a really fucking good tournament. Obviously, I've done Insomnias, loads of Insomnias, Epic Lands. I've also done at the same time, which again is a lower level of com competition. But if you even want to move to the Rocket League space, I have done Gfinity as well, and I remember my Gfinity experience. Loads of people said that I was like in that broadcast like ducks to water you know like that, that mm. like, people like, i remember like fucking banana man did that little that, that that gift tweet of him using that polish stuff which made me laugh a little <laughs> do you remember that one it was like oh seeing switch yeah. jamie on the thing he like, used that every single time for every tweet but it's just yeah. like you, you know it's good <laughs> and with damascus as well you know damascus for me is like one of those key examples it's like yeah he has been trialed he has been trialed mm -hmm. not only has he done gfinity not only do you do gfinity week in and week out he does the fgc stuff and he does it so much more than he does Rocket League. It's like, mate, this guy is a standout class act professional. Like, mm -hmm. he, there's, 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 like, you know, there's, there's no excuse other than he's not been trialed with what with us, which doesn't make any yeah. sense because, like, how else are we supposed to, how else are we supposed to actually, you know, get that chance to go to some of the bigger lands? If, if Sionix, so, so oh, you haven't been trialed with Sionix events. It's like, well, how am I supposed to go to another Sionix Sionix event? It's a catch twenty two, you know. Yep. And that it, to me, it just makes no sense because for Rock League, especially to grow, they need to bring in more presence. They cannot purely live off uh, NA casters. They've got to bring in that sort of yeah. EU scene. Even if you're saying they're going to stick entirely with NA casters, then they've got to bring in through more NA casters, be able to live that way anyway. But like we were saying with the whole casting style thing, there's a lot of EU people that don't like the NA casting. Like, you'll see it all the time. There's, I mean, you see more so the fucking toxic Twitch chat, don't get me wrong. But well, not there even, is, not, not even course... that. Like, not, not even that. Like, you know, like, I, I just wanted to raise my hand and interject real quick because I just wanted to say, like, look, like, I've, I've heard it from pro players as well. Like, you know, pro players have told me that I, I don't, I, I, I think you're the best caster. You bring, the, you bring the best of EU. You know, I'm not a fan of North America and the way that they do things. And for similar reasons why I've said I don't like other North America, I don't like the North American style as a whole because I think it's stilted. I think it's too static. That's, that's, just, the, that's just the way that I see the, the North American style. And that's the same thing with a lot of pro players. It's not just toxic. Toxic Twitch chat because mm. toxic Twitch the chat. Same thing, toxic though. Twitch chat are the same people that will say I don't like the North American style. Then turn around to an EU caster and say you're the worst caster in the world. It's like mate, you have no fucking logical. Oh, consistency. they just being toxic for toxic sake. They're yeah, little, exactly. Uh, like you know, th 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 those guys, it. those dark guys don't really matter that much. But like it, it, the, mm. the, the significant people are the opinions that I pay attention to, and even they are the ones saying. From, from Europe, of course, they're the ones saying, I don't really like the North American style. Mm -hmm. I think for EU broadcasts, we should have you guys on, we should have Shogun on, we should have Cole and Stumpy and, 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 um, and Johnny Boy on. You know, th 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 these are the guys, you know, th 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 that make this what it is. And I, I feel, I, I, I do feel like, it, I do feel mm -hmm. a little, I'm not, I, I do feel a little bit like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, and I, I want to say like slap to the face, but that's not the, what, the sort of thing I'm going for right here. Because like it's more like just a case of I'm just disappointed that we haven't yeah. seen more of this. Not only from the likes of RCS and DreamHacks, but just in general across Rocket League, like the Renegade Cup, for example. You know, the finals, all North American guys. They even had Leafex on there. Oh. Like you know, at least get one of us out. You know, at least <laughs> get Bacon out there. Like he's fucking color casting like so many times. We do this <laughs> podcast week in week out. He knows exactly what he's talking about. That's for mm. certain. I can tell you right now. <laughs> you know, like at least fly him out and give him some sort. Of the thing right there because you know he the other guy is like you know he, even squid was asking you about like you know uh, yeah, about I've information you know later. about information <laughs> about, the, about the rocket league scene it's about the eu rocket league scene it's like you can mitigate this problem by just giving the guy a job you know yeah. just give him the job you know that, 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 i think for me that is the problem you can definitely see it when it came around to like our uh rlcs and rlrs where some of the American guys don't know the EU scene as well. Like, uh, definitely, when it came around to, say, the third week of RORS, they knew those teams. They knew them well. But before that, when they were doing definitely the um, play-ins to RORS, and this will actually be another thing I want mixed up, is do the research on the bubble teams. I know, naturally, it is hard because a lot of these guys are technically unknowns. 
But when you've got guy like the problem is that the RLCS lot don't do any community stuff anymore. So they are literally not able to see any of uh, the community sort of like players come through in that like you know when it when it, it I'm trying to think of um, like like rival at the weekend you know where we had um, HG massively step in like to us that was the surprise and this is the final point where they're coming through Magu we've known for ages and he is a lad which I will sing the praise of he is going to be one of those next two pop off sort of like players onto a bigger team but no Sararis was the one I did not know of Hyde has been lingering around at, at this bubble team uh, bubble scene for a while <laughs> never this high but with this roster it worked really well but the NA guys could not say the same thing about the EU side. And I would even say in a lot of ways, when you watch those planes, they don't know that about even the NA sort of bubble teams coming through and all of that. That's why the RLRS casters are brung on to do that for the NA side, because they do know they're still doing all the community stuff. It just seems like a massive missed sort of like point. And you can tell on the stream that they don't know the players and that is so vitally wrong from a broadcast. Yeah, and you know, again, it ties back into my points of how prepared we really are. Because, like, you know, I don't think I've ever gone into a broadcast mm. without doing some basic research, with the exception of maybe this one gone last week, because it was a small five hundred dollar tournament. Uh, but you know, I remember the the RLCS qualifiers when we did those mm -hmm. rival esports. I went into those with a fucking pack of information, um, the lands that I've been to as well, like you know, the FCB Cup I mentioned a moment ago, the SEC I also mentioned a moment ago. Those ones I also went into a lot of prep with the UK lands, like you know. With the exception of Epic Land, because it's much more laid yeah, back. Yeah, I was going to say, the only well. ones I never do prep for is Epic, because it's fun. It's I actually yeah. prefer turning up with nothing, being pleasantly surprised. The players that, like, because they're not anyone that you can do prep on, because it's going to be your diamonds that are turning up just for fun, or hopefully for this Epic coming up, you'll have uh, players like, say, I don't know, say Shakaron just randomly turns up, to which... I can tell you so much fucking history off the top of my head about Chakron, so why hmm. do I need to research it, you know? Yeah, and <laughs> and even, even, even just to go back onto like the, the UK BYOCs as well, I don't think I've ever turned up to an insomnia without being prepared. Like, you know, I always have a baseline oh, yeah. knowledge of the teams involved. Like, you know, in the past, I've actually written up little articles uh, on mm -hmm. my on, on my website that I used to have, and it's basically just like, you know, I might have to go to the internet archive to dig it up again, but basically like, talking about the teams and players and who's playing and who to watch out for, mm -hmm. who are the favourites, who are the dark horses, who are the underdogs, uh, you know, and, and doing all that shit just even just to prepare myself for the cast itself you know i don't think i've ever done a broadcast a significant broadcast without that sort of baseline information unless it was super super last second uh like for example uh, certain uh, things i've been doing recently with uml uh and even then you know i've got a life database of information that i can pull from and i understand it enough to the point where i can just go into the match and quickly look and quickly understand exactly what i'm doing even then i'll still take an hour to understand things from a much more in-depth perspective you know and again mm. i feel like that's that's just a consequence of just Again, not, 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 not enough trust, I think. And yeah, I should, I should not also say as well, as well I, just, I just want to say, because yeah. I, I know that people have taken this wrong in the past, I'm not trying to say that I don't think the current casters are good enough, because I've, I've said it as well, you know, I think that Wave Punk is a really good play-by-play. -play. I think Achieves is a fantastic colour caster. Like, his knowledge of the game is Achieves unreal. Achieves needs more, I Achieves, the, Achieves, Achieves needs to be working at a grand final, in my opinion. Uh, you know, I, I feel like, that I, I, again, I don't have a problem with, with, with NA casters or and individuals as NA casters. I I have a problem with the with mm -hmm. the style and the fact that EU is not getting a chance because it fucking deserves a chance. Yeah, and that's the problem. Like we're also saying that, like you know, it could be taken wrong that uh, the NA casters aren't doing their research from like what we said, but it's purely because if you don't know them and you've got 128 teams, remember that you've got to somehow do research on them. You don't. You do lots of research on the top 15 seeded teams because most likely with the RLRS format, they're going to be the ones there. And hence why, like when you had the teams like, say, I can remember Golden Hawks back in the day, you know, or they were Falcons. I can't remember which one it was. Uh, they were Golden Hawks and then Falcons, I think it was, um, where they were like the 48th seeded team and they came through and everyone was just there like, yeah we got no fucking idea and they had to sort of make their way through without doing any background and it just showed whereas i mean we hardly ever get to see the spanish scene because the spaniards don't really leave their own stuff but when you see them you know the big teams you're talking like you know the e-monkeys the existence guys even to arg now coming through you know them when they come through because they are just the best from the scene
Exactly, you know, like, I feel like... Yeah, I think we made our piece on that particular prospect. Again, yeah. I'm not dissing anybody that will currently works on the ROCS broadcasts. Um, I'm just saying I think there needs it's to be It's a problem more. with the format, not the casters. Exactly. That's the crux of there's it. Only one peer part, there's only one entity that can change that, and I think we all know who that entity is. So let's leave that there <laughs> and move on to our final beast of the night. It's going to be our tournament roundup. Again, it's been a quiet week. We're in the off-season. There is no RLCS. There is no GFINITY Elite Series. There is no Renegade Cup. What we have is the rival Esports EU $500 all-platform tournament. Um, there was another tournament that also went down this weekend, um, which was called Greenfield. The, uh, yeah, the Greenfield Winter Cup. I decided, to, I decided not to include it just because like nothing really happened, per se. Like, I you know, looked wasn't... at this like before because we were deciding like whether to include it and that and it was like a German Austrian slash I think even a little bit Swiss torn and German speaking I, regions it seems yeah this whole tournament like looking at the results was a clusterfuck and I have no heckin idea because again watching the vods back it was yeah it wasn't the best and yeah it like. It was super confused, and I don't know how this whole played out as it did. But I don't. We've got no sort of like right to talk about it. I think is the best way to put it because we don't have enough knowledge. We know a lot of the players, but I'm just saying, like Stage Five Gaming, the team that came um, runners up of it, um, Eckhard, Millennium, and Fabso. I know Fabso. The other two, I have no bloody idea about. So again, <laughs> I've got no right to talk about that team, really. You know? Yeah, I feel the same way as well. Again, I was That's looking not... at this, I was like, you know what? Like a lot of the results seem to be either expected or not, and I don't know why. And I was looking at this like, you know, there's not a whole lot of known names, so I decided not to just go for it in the end. We're just going to focus on the rival esports uh, $500 tournament again because this was the big thing that happened uh, over the course of the weekend. It was the much more signed up for team for certain, I can tell you that. Um, although the prize pool was a lot smaller than the uh, Winter Cup, uh, still, we had a Just much... to quickly say, actually, out of the 16 teams there, I know nine of them. The other seven, I have no bloody idea who these players are. So that is the point, again, just like... Jeez, it it's a weird enough. one. This came out of nowhere as well because I never saw this posted anywhere. And then it was just like, I think it was wind and rain is where I saw it originally about them posting that their new roster was playing in this. And it was the first time they're playing as a team, you know? And it was just like, eh? <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, so, yeah, I. Uh, I... <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know what to say about that. Either way, let's talk about the Rival Esports Cup again. Uh, you can see the brackets on screen right now. We had uh, Nordwind and ARG in the finals. And ARG were the victors. Actually, before we get onto that, let's talk about a quick, just sort of a like general sort of point about the tournament, because I didn't want to bring this up as well. We had an unrivaled amount of signups for this hey. one. Like, on the Smash GG page... Teams? Um, let, me I can, let me see if I can verify. I, last, last time I checked, it was in like the 90s or something. Uh, 94 total teams. I'm not sure how many were complete. But fucking hell. That is... GG. Ridiculous. Well, well, like, I've, I've, I've complained about EU not taking the time to sign up in the past. But this is like completely overshadowing that. And yeah, we had a few missing names like that. I didn't see the likes of Team Secret. Uh, you know, I didn't see the likes of- It was a $500, so that's to be more expected. But I would have thought they'd be trying to do that purely to get the experience for Dreamhack yeah, coming up this yeah, weekend. The yeah. practice, because you might you might end up meeting all of in the finals or you might end up meeting some of the uh, smaller bubble teams that are still going to this tournament. Um, so I'm taking a look at this like, okay, that's pretty surprising, but still, the amount of people that we got just off of getting from like the the, the the consoles and from the other systems that don't get represented in Rocket League Esports, it was a question that I had to ask myself. It's like, would it be worth it catering to the smaller console markets or catering to the console markets in terms of esports so we can try and, you know, bring forth sort of like a newer element of um uh, uh of of of, of, of and sort of like just to bring forth more p participation in the uh, uh in, in the esports space as a whole because that is really where you start you know the casual gamer but not all the casual gamers are into mm. pc you know the pros originally were playing on ps4 back in the day so you know i want to get your thoughts on this like is that a thing we should be considering and even then, the only... how do we do it so there's no excuse not to have all the platforms here you're not ex you can't you just do the same promotion as normal uh of course you're not locking anyone out like thinking about um players that would sign up to this tournament there's only one player i can think of off the top of my head and that is uh iCash who's a very good ps4 player 
but that is it. His two teammates play on PC, you know, and they'll talk over Discord probably, I'd imagine, or something like that. So that is literally the only time I can think where having it multi-platform helps. The multi-platform aspect is more so just for community. It's more for casuals. It's more for friends. You know, if you're a streamer and you set up your private lobbies, you're like, oh, view games, anyone can join. Then it just makes it helpful. I can remember back in the day streaming that and I can do, okay, for these first three games, we're going to do best of three PS4, then we'll do best of three Xbox and Switch. And that was just a pain to continuously have to, you know, organize and make sure all of that. This where everyone's allowed on makes life so much easier. And I mean, just from the news and that, where multi-platforms are coming a bigger thing, to the point of, I think, Microsoft are even doing stuff with the Switch coming up. Oh, well, yeah, like, there was like an announcement they're going to bring Xbox Live to the Switch. I'm like, what the actual fuck, guys? How like, does what? that work? But how does please, that work? I want to know. Like, could you imagine something like Forza Horizon on your Switch? That would be nuts good. But yeah, different topic. <laughs> but yeah, here, very it different shows- topic. Multi-platform is not for esports. It is purely for casuals. I mean, we've seen some TOs try and go specifically towards one platform. I'm thinking about like Rainbow Six, where they have held PS4 or Xbox only tournaments, and they've been shite. No, you go for PC purely because that's where your dedicated fan base are, and your dedicated fan base are the best players. They're the strongest fan base, you know? Okay, well, I wanted to post to you as well was that because obviously the the the, the theory in, in terms of developing esports is that you get the the casual players, the younger players in at the ground level, mm. and you build them up as the skill gets better. So, isn't and that that's a decent argument to make for like the bubble scene at the very least to start to build up those smaller things? Because now that we've got the, the now that we've got all platforms involved and we've got massive cross platform play, like. This could but, end no, that's up- what I'm saying. So there's nothing locking PS4, Xbox, or even Switch players out. You just don't account for them because they're so minor in number. You're not hurting them. It just it's business as usual, you know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to find a counter argument to this. <laughs> <laughs> Because here's the but, thing, right? The, the, the thing about Rival, and the reason why Rival discontinued their uh, their weeklies is because the signups were just too low, right? People mm. were getting tired of doing the weekly tournaments. But now that we've seen signups like this, um, like, w- w- is, is there an argument to say to bring those back for the sake of just the multi-platform element, for the sake so, of those smaller people who want to get involved in esports but don't have the PC <laughs> to do that, you know? So I don't think the Rival's like sign-up rate was anything to do with the mock platform stuff it was purely a hundred dollars wasn't enough to sway or 150 dollars was it sorry i can't remember uh was enough to sway these players to take time out of their sunday or uh it was saturdays actually back in the day it's more like this is 500 dollars, so that's enough to get all the bubble teams in and even northern in this case and where the rocket league community is starved for taunts at the moment like very weeklies have died out um, I'm not saying that's a bad thing because there are still weeklies going on. They're just generally a new, I'm going to say in quotations, org or community has been set up and they're just a bunch of friends wanting to put on a tournament for funsies. Uh, they're looking only to get like up to 16 teams in of any level and they're just going to put $20 into it as the prize. That's fine. That's how the base level, the grassroots of community stuff starts. And then that's your weeklies and then you get these big community monthlies 500 dollars rival is actually normally about a thousand dollars when you look at the winter series coming up uh 22nd of february is when qualifiers are out for that signups are live now and then make the- sure you sign up to that EU, by the way yeah, if i see any more fucking forfeits one. i'm gonna be <laughs> pissed on the next episode of aftershock <laughs> they're changing their format actually so they've got an open bracket on the friday and then uh which is done off stream and then on sunday the top four from the open bracket go through and face up against like the top four or it might be the top eight go through and they face up against four invited teams on the sunday so it's a really quick turnaround uh tournament hopefully you should be able to stream every single game of it and it's more like a fact of which they're trying out a new format to it which i'm back him purely because it doesn't have swiss in it jay and you know how much i yeah, fucking hate swiss I, I hate swiss, swiss well. is only ever good at bringing your own computer to lands because it's more about and i'm not saying like proper lands like dreamhack no should never be at dreamhack i'm talking your 500 your, pound like, tournament yeah, where yeah, it's more like, there for fun 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, to be fair, like, probably I'd, I'd make an argument for something like, it. <coughs> oh shit, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Um, you know, uh, for you, like, you, you, you were like Epic Lana Insomnia to a, to a certain extent. Uh, mm -hmm. So you know, it, it, that that probably be, that, when you got like a shit ton of signups, and it's like there's no possible way you can seed every single one. So it's like fuck this. Yep. Oh, everyone in the Swiss system, ham ham ham. Uh, or, or you can seed <laughs> the best teams in the top, so that way they face against the lowest teams from the bottom or something shit like that. I don't fucking know. Yeah. Even then, they'll probably end up facing each other in the later parts of Swiss anyway. So well, it for that really anyway, you would just do Swiss and an MMR seeding. That is it. Pretty simple. I can remember talking about it because I think did we see Marky sign up um, for? He did. I'm pretty sure for the rival stuff and he got knocked out in an earlier round it was or something like that but rival were trying to seed him or something like that and his mr was only like 1400 which is like very low grand champ which is low because it um you know because naturally he's a good player but it's just there because he doesn't care for ranked so that is when mmr seeding doesn't work but I'm so like 98 percent right. yeah. of the time it will work, so you go with that. They're your outliers, which means his team, or whatever, will go. Oh, we've been given a shitty seed him. Why don't you move us up? And you're like, fucking play the game, <laughs> and we wouldn't have this problem, would we? Hmm? Pretty much. Sorry, I get triggered. <laughs> all right, well, let's move on from the all platform signups and shit, and let's talk about the uh, the tournament itself because there was a tournament. I don't know if you I don't know if you could tell, um, and the results were kind of surprising. Again, I mentioned ARG steamrolling mm -hmm. their way to victory with a grand final win against Nordavin. Um, I didn't expect this at all. I mean, not against Nordavin at least. I mean, for ARG, yeah. it's massive, obviously, with their victory in the Ember series just this past one month. Like, this is an absolutely huge victory for the Spaniards, you know, just to come forward and do this amount, take out the likes of the schnoozers, and then do the same thing <laughs> against Nordavin. Like, we were saying these guys mm. are our potential RLRS caliber. I'd say they're almost a shoe-in to get through the qualifiers and oh, yeah. oh, yeah, definitely ARG now are looking like one of the best bubble teams in the whole of Europe. EU, face it. Even NA, you could say the best bubble team there because, you know, NA's bubble teams are a little bit weaker, it seems, uh, from looking at a lot of the Renegade Cup stuff. You know, I was doing Rival and uh, did the finals for Mythical recently. That was fun. Um, but yeah, just looking at it, EU is on the bubble level so well ahead, and it's actually scary because there's only four spots, and it is literally everyone <laughs> fighting tooth and nail for four spots. Like, you, it's a bit like, can you remember last season? There was um, not Prosper. Like in, the team Z9 was on. They got through to the last match and then knocked out there. And you're like, they were on the dream run. And then it just fell at the last hurdle. Mean, and you feel you know so who? bad for them. Uh, no, uh, Z9, the player. Method oh, sub. you mean from the last... RLRS qualifiers. From less RLRS qualifiers. Oh, yeah. Um, Got all the way through in... Was it the, like the academics, or something? The academics or something? Mm. Um, the intellectuals. The intellectuals. Intellectuals. There it was. Yeah, but they're like a very community cup team and everyone's there cheering them on. And then felt the last huddle and it felt so bad. So fucking like a stab oh. to the gut. Like, no! It really was. Why? Blood everywhere. And you're just there like, not like this. I thought I had the high ground. Oh, all that sort of jazz. <laughs> you underestimate uh, my power. <laughs> <laughs> but no, ARG at the moment, if I can't see them just like shit in the bed, because that's what would have to happen, because they're in such good form. Like they went through the whole rival, dropped two games in the entirety of it, and it was to stake Chacron Godsmiller. That's a good RLRS caliber team as it is that, you know, it's part of Chacron's trying to figure out the next team to move on to. Uh, God's very good player. I'm liking it. Um, Steak is nuts, but he, I would say he go, jumps between teams too much. So hopefully if he settles down here, we'll be able to improve well, actually, a bit more. I mean, it's the fun and, thing about that. Actually, he competed against ARG in, um, what was it, in, in Chacron's squad. Uh, who yeah. was it? And he uh, used to two, be on two ARG. Plus two yeah. is four. Uh, so, you know, obviously he was on ARG as a sub uh, for the last one. Um, uh, but by the way, can I just also make a sub point as well? Uh, Godspinner was playing with two plus two, and I, I think it's pretty much confirmed now that he has actually left Nordavind. So, um, that, Are that's they still point. not officially announced that? Because, I mean, it's pr they, they've been playing with uh, Sebadan for like the last month. Well, I so. mean, his, his, his uh, Twitter is still Nordavind Godsmiller, as far as I know. I think that's just people being lazy, Jay. Um, 
just going to put it there. I think a lot. Um, yeah, a lot. Oh, of no, he changed it. One. He changed it. Okay, oh. so he's actually he, he he's gone now. It's uh, so he, it's he semi-official. <laughs> But yeah, Junior for there. I feel bad because I just want Junior to get bloody onto a proper team and not be the sub because I think he's good enough. Yeah, he certainly is good enough. Like fucking, please somebody. Like again, go with that. I would actually that really on. like to see Shakron Junior and Breezy. Shakron just holds the back line, says, "Go, you my children. Let them charge up field." Yeah, and exactly. he just holds the defense like a tank. That would be fan fucking tastic, but. I think the problem with Junior is that he doesn't have as much confidence as he needs in himself, you know? That's why I'd like to see him pair up with someone like Chacaron, because Chacaron potentially could give him that confidence. Show him the ropes. Or, or you know, again, yeah. part of the reason why I think he was on, he would have fit well with someone like Vitality, for example, is because Gregan's there. Gregan's a life coach, essentially. So to mm -hmm. see him do some good work with that guy, you know, he's got a lot of faith in Junior. Well, he had a lot of faith in Junior back during the last season of Elite Series. Um, will they draft him up again? I don't know. I don't know what the situation is with, with uh, uh, Junior and what he wants to do with the Elite Series. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see, like, a Reason Gaming or, like, an Asus Rogue Army pick him up uh, as part of their main roster, but they've got to find... He's got to find... That's just a because it'd be a case of, like, a new org enters Rocket League, another uni lad or whatever, and, like, they go to Gfinity. Okay, we have no fucking idea about Rocket League. Who do we pick up? Gfinity suddenly go, Chakron, who are you playing with at the moment? <laughs> they need a team. And that is pretty much it. You don't realise it. It was the same, like, I told you about the whole hashtag United thing. It was like, they don't give a damn. They just went to Doomsday. Who are you playing with at the moment? Uh, you're quite good farm. We'll get you back on is how it works with that when it comes down to the bottom teams that is beautiful that is something Pretty else wrong. <laughs> that is fucking fantastic um yeah i mean <laughs> well again I, I wish you the best of luck going forward again i really want to see what happens with that one uh what i also want to see what happens with is, is nordvind uh because uh, they had a really good run until the grand finals and they didn't win a single game against arg it was 2-1 2-1 and 3-2 so it was a close series mm -hmm. but arg in the end took it at a 3-0 at the end of the day. So let's talk about this one a little bit. What, ha what happened to Nordavind um, in that last one? Because you were casting that one. So yep. let me know, what, what, what do you think happened? Nordavind Nord just lost all energy. That was the problem. So if we're going to look, like you've got to start at the start of night. So Villarreal was a strangely really easy one for them to take earlier on against Exalti, who, by the way, Exalti had picked up a new team, D7 Fake Out and uh, Sluway. Uh, D7 Fake Out, been around for ages together and they're nuts uh but against mindset who were a bit like come out of left field everyone saw because you know mindset who the fuck's that team oh it's calyx oscillon and astral yikes the first game nordovin came in and uh got the win just second game mindset came in and just like spanked them something rotten um it was only a 2-0 don't get me wrong but then after that nordovin just suddenly went okay we're just going to, like, in our discussion, Drew, it was stop thinking, start ball chasing. Like, you know, do as Master Yoda <laughs> start says. Start ball chasing. You know, there, there is no, <laughs> like, what is it? No, Morpheus, sorry. Uh, don't try, do, or something like that, where just their problem was that they were thinking too much, thus it made them slow. Instead, they've got to be fast, they're a bit more quick, and it worked fucking wonders. That last game from Nordvin, game four, Jesus, they were out fucking standing in that one. They came up against ARG, and can you guess what they started doing? Thinking what? again. <laughs> and they were slow as fuck. <laughs> and that's the problem. You can't be slow against the Spanish team. We've seen it all the time. It's the whole bim bam mentality, you know, where just, just they charge it out of the field, and you cannot be slow against them because they'll just run circles around you, you know? I think this meme that you posted in our image dump kind of like summarizes the whole thing right there in the <laughs> yeah. event. Just like, and it's uh, gone. gone. <laughs> <laughs> like just... I was getting so hyped for Nordvin. You don't realize it. Like there was a, such a nuts goal from Data. And then coming to the next series, like off of that, and you're just there like, oh my God, this is going to be so good. Nordvin are finally looking good again. And then... And it's gone. Ah, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, man. So like, yeah, I mean, it's another Ooh. blow for Nordavind as well, being a middling team in the Elite Series and being a middling squad for the RLRS. And it was just like, well, we don't think I they want to fit. I'm and quickly like, looking well. back at what the results were from RLRS because I'm they stayed up, if I remember right, but it was like literally on game difference, you know? Um, Let's have a look-see. 
RLCS are low. They came fifth, so they're actually out. They're going to requalify. Oh. They were down. Jeez, they, were, they were down by. Uh, what was it? Who stayed up then? Who was the team that stayed up? Secret and Method stayed up. Five oh, two, Secret and Method, yep, yep. 5 2 each. Nordovin came in at 3 to 4, so they actually lost by like two games. Two series, I should say, sorry. Oh, yeah, alright, cool. Oh, I'm. Am I thinking. Of... I don't know, whatever, but it was. It might have been the season before. It was like that. Whatever it is, but Nordovin. Like, they, they should make it back into RORS. Like. Well, the key there being should, but if ARG are also on track to make it into the RLCS, I'm looking at that like, wow. Well... Mm -hmm. Xeno Moon look good at the moment. This new mindset, which essentially is Clappers 2.0. Um, I don't know. I'm looking at other players like. You've, you've got RG and Ixo coming through. Um. Caro's looking nuts at the moment. Like, anything could happen, and it's weird. Like, that's why this RORS coming up, like, I'm definitely going to be watching every single moment of it. Like, last yeah, season, you have to. Like, there's no RORS way. was more interesting than RLCS because it was unpredictable. RLCS last season was pretty much just... Um, you know, Dingrat's house wins everything, and TSM and at that shit, point, and, 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 girls and, and then they shit the bed in the grand finals, and they disappoint everybody. It's like, oh, oh great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the sudden falling off the cliff for Dignitas. And I'm <laughs> saying that's them falling off the cliff. They come out like, what now? Fourth or something? Fourth slash third in everything, which is still so fucking good. But it's just like, we're used to such a period of Dignitas where they won everything. So now it's a disappointment, which, ah, uh, yikes. Yeah, no, but just jump back on your point again. I'm gonna be really excited for the RL RS of, of season of season mm. seven. Just like no way am I missing a single game of these. I really hope that Psionics found out a solution where we can actually watch the games that are gonna go off stream or they just broadcast all the games. If Shice doesn't give, give us, us the ping, either Shice, like... I know you listen to this podcast, right? Slide into my DMs, right? And I will stream anyone's DMs the, and we'll slide get into it. my DMs. I will stream them. I will get the best of the bubble scene and I'll do it for free, for fuck's sake, right? Because that is just you, you we My point there is that any of this. the orcs would do it for free. Like then it just goes to the point is do Sionics want that to be like covered by orcs for that? Then in that case, go to casters directly. Yeah, because and that's casters also your chance to it. prove us. You know, you got pre your commitment problems with the EU talent. Like fucking, we'll do it. We'll prove ourselves, and then and we'll do it for free. You know, like it's it's free labor. <laughs> like it's slave labor right there. Just give I it... suddenly had such a cocky thought in my in my head. Where it was just, just like, like oh, it. then all the messages are being there. Like oh, these casters should be on RLRS, and it's just <laughs> well, I've oh. already had one Reddit thread. I've already had one Reddit thread yeah. on on RLS about being on RLS. So yes, so I'll uh, I'll take it for now. Your um, your ego can get more inflated. <laughs> I actually had to adjust that my headphones it. the other day because my head is getting a lot bigger. Uh, so uh, there we go. Um, there's one more. Team you wanted to highlight before we end off the show. HG yep. and Magu. Uh, Magu, obviously, being a, a massive, massive member of the uh, bubble space. And uh, from mm -hmm. this squad, they managed to make it all the way through to the semi finals where they faced off against ARG. They did lose 3 0 to ARG. But they also managed to beat out the likes of Savet Geneva on the way, who were pretty good. A Equilibriatus, be honest, who, yep. also beat out, um, who also beat out Method earlier on in the bracket, uh, which is also a massive disappointment for Method. And it doesn't show on the graphics. I can't. I can't put the entire smash I think Method will be shot. happy that they did so bad that they don't get shown up on the, the Liquipedia page. That's good for them. <laughs> <laughs> Silver linings, Jay. Silver linings. <laughs> every cloud, every cloud. But yeah, talk to me more about this roster because you're the one who put this point in. You're the one who wanted to talk mm. more about Magu and how well he's mixed with this brand new squad. So there should hopefully be a clip on um, Rocket Dailies tonight showing off a nuts goal from them. But basically, Magu at the moment is part of this group. Like I said earlier, I used Ixo, Arjun, and that is the example, where he is going to be the next generation of good Rocket League players. You can see it coming. And he had joined into this HG roster, uh, Soraris and Haida, uh, two Italian players, Italian org, all of that. They're looking for a player to join them, essentially. And Magu, you remember him from Bolo, right? Yep. Just came on in for this tournament and he looked like a natural fit. Like the chemistry was there. It was just absolutely nuts. And it's once again, it feels like anything that Magu touches suddenly jumps up from being, you know, a um a low tier bubble team 
to a higher tier bubble team. Like, here's that difference. I don't think and this isn't a down put on Soraris or Haida. I don't think he's going to be staying with them because he's, like, you know, worth that little bit more. If it, it's a dick thing to say, yes, but it's what it is. Um, you know, but I've, he's one of those ones which I'm hoping he's going to be able to crank out a good team for RLRS because he's got a solid chance to make it in there if he just gets a good cup run on the day because he is potentially an absolute nuts player and I'm hoping he's going to be able to pull out the next, like, you know, Yukio move where essentially he just gets picked up out of the blue, another alpha, you know, where he has got so much potential to go far within Rocket League. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, I can see that coming through as well. You know, Magu has just been, you know, a really, really big player, a really, really good mm. star. Um, just it, it, He just works really well, I think, honestly. And I could see him going forward to the, uh, to the, to the RLRS. Maybe he could also make a decent run. I don't know if Bolo are going to be invited to the uh, Renegade Cup finals because obviously they have technically split. Um, but of course uh, I think they're fine because they didn't com- it's it's the problem right technically they didn't compete in the roster didn't change for december it was for january sorry so they haven't lost any points they've got enough po- like they didn't break up that roster they've got enough points from december to go on through so they right like not rightfully but by the rules they should be allowed to compete in the finals and I mean, we've had a couple of war- uh, words for the Sonics a lot, and I haven't heard anything from them that Bolo are out. So, by all, all right, means, well, they should be at the Renegade Finals. Well, keep your eye on them at the Renegade Cup Finals, because, of course, that is coming up in just a few short days. Actually, I think four days from now. Uh, it starts on the 8th. Actually, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It, it, it just ex- it perfectly we're aware Epic, Epic Land. Land, and yeah. Yeah, we've got so we, we, we've, got a, we've got a hell of a task ahead of us, Bacon, to not only do casting for Epic Land, but also to um, uh, turn around and Double try to see if we can also watch the Renegade Cup Finals. So... Uh, We've got a we, we got a fun time ahead of us, I think, Bacon. We got a fun time ahead of us, and of course, that fun time extends far into the weekend, into the weekend. So make sure you go ahead and tune into <laughs> all that good stuff of the EU Rocket League scene. For now, though, that's going to be it from us here at Arl After Shock. It's been an hour and a half on the dot as of as of me saying this. Uh, although, admittedly, that's mm-hmm. probably going to run over because I've got some final statements to make. Of course, uh, to uh, remember, remind you to follow the Twitch at uh, twitch.tv slash Arl After Shock, Twitter at Arl After Shock. Um, I've been teasing a little bit of upcoming content. We've been working and making some changes behind the scenes but we're almost ready to reveal things I'm just going to get some graphic designs and reach out to some certain individuals who want to cover who we want to get uh, mm-hmm. on the show uh, and yes we're getting some new people on the show it's going to be really really fun uh, <laughs> so make sure you do to go to that also go to anchor.fm slash hour and aftershock to make sure you listen to the audio versions or the YouTube version on YouTube uh, just search for Jay uh, it's going to be very difficult because I just changed my name to Jay uh, rather than Twitchplay Jay uh, and a lot of channels are called Jay <laughs> so uh, maybe you should just search for it in the YouTube thing or you can just check the podcast yeah. description I'm pretty sure it's got some information information about that where you can also look into the discord as well uh, but for the audio version you can go to anchor.fm slash rl after shock where you can check out the itunes google podcast and spotify listing alongside seven other of your favorite platforms and to request your favorite way of listening but that is going to be it from today's show bacon any final words before we head out for another week um not really just i'm super hyped Cooks for, in a speedo. Uh, epic land. <laughs> Cooks here in a speedo coming to you live from epic land this weekend you know what should we get that photoshop and put it on the epic land stream oh Do you think jesus that- christ no <laughs> no that will get banned we'll get banned so hard gump has um, no choice <laughs> John, I apologize. Please don't find me from Grove. All right. We're going to head out. Thanks again for watching. We'll take you to the, 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 the cafe. Take care, and we'll see you back here next week when we cover even more of the Aftershock. <laughs>